Every woodworker knows he needs a workbench, and we've made plenty of workbench-related tutorials, some of which I'll link to below this video so you can check them out. But do you also need a saw bench, or two? I think so, and that's what this video is about. Saw benches are old-timey devices that many modern woodworkers seem to have forgotten, and I think that's a shame because they're extremely versatile. This is my version. I made it several years ago, and I recently produced a set of detailed instructions for building it, which you can find on our website or at the link below this video. Mine features a split top and dog holes, features that aren't usually found on saw benches, but I think they should be, as you'll see shortly. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about what makes a saw bench so handy. Basically, it's a short workbench, but its height isn't arbitrary. It's customized to your body. Way back in the old-timey days, someone figured out that if you build a bench that comes up about an inch below your knee, your body can be used to clamp your work. Let's say you're cross-cutting a board to length. Most boards are about an inch thick. So when you lay it on top of the saw bench, it comes to a comfortable height for placing your knee on top to hold your work. But downward pressure isn't the only thing holding your work. You place your other knee against the edge of the board as well to control lateral motion. It's a very comfortable, secure way to cross cut. Even power tool woodworkers must occasionally rip long boards to length before they machine them. A saw bench and a sharp cross cut saw is often quicker than getting out and plugging in a circular saw and it is definitely quieter. If you're really into hand sawing, a saw bench makes an ideal ripping tool as well. Traditionally, they featured a V-shaped notch at the end for that purpose. That notch could also be used creatively for other work holding purposes, such as wedging a frame and panel upright so you can plane the edge. But I prefer a split top design because it gives me more depth for ripping without cutting into my bench. This is especially useful when working with smaller pieces that need more support. But longer boards can be ripped a foot or so at a time, advancing the board forward as you work. Saw benches are usually made in pairs, so the second one can support the end of your workpiece. Having two also makes it possible to arrange them as you would saw horses for project assembly and the like. But the best part about a saw bench is that you can use them sitting down when your feet or your back get tired. Don't worry about cutting too far. Like my fancy electronic table saw, this old-timey saw will stop cutting when it hits flesh. Speaking of working sitting down, the other end of my saw bench is a sit-down work surface, complete with dog holes to secure your workpiece for mortising and other boring tasks. <laughs> Get it? This is primarily a power tool workshop, but I still love my saw benches. They're cheap to build and extremely versatile for sawing, chopping, drilling, sitting on top, standing on top, throw a half sheet of plywood on top, and you have a low table for assembling casework or finishing large projects. The uses are endless. Plus, they're super cheap to build from construction lumber. This particular design looks a little complicated with some dovetail joinery, there's even some mortise and tenon in there, but I designed it that way to encourage you to try some new hand tool techniques. In fact, this is the perfect project on which to learn some new skills because it's a saw bench. Nobody cares if you have some gaps in your joints. If you decide to build mine, the instructions will walk you through everything, including how to repair your mistakes if you make any. So check them out at the link below. Even if you're a power tool woodworker, you will find many uses for a saw bench. See you next time. I've been using DuraGrit carbide sanding products for years, and I still haven't worn out the first ones I bought. If I have a rough edge to smooth, a corner to chamfer, or a curve to shape, more often than not, I'm reaching for one of these cleverly designed tools. It's one of those workshop secrets I wish I'd discovered long ago. Check out the link below this video to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.